This is KBYP looking at the myth and fairy tales surrounding ground grid amplifiers. Favorite topic in amateur radio, just full of mistakes and, and inaccuracies. Ground grid came from, I think it was the 1930s, back with almost entirely received tubes, sensitive grid, the grids can't take any real power. This was an early circuit with a transformer coupling into what is falsely claimed to be cathode drive. It's falsely claimed because a transformer looks like it's connected to the cathode. Well, it is. Grounded grid, negative of the B battery, ground. Let's see, ground here. Here connects this leg of the transformer to the grid. Therefore, the drive is grid to cathode. There is no such thing as cathode drive or grid drive. It is impossible to drive one element. Control on the vacuum tube is an electrostatic field for these sensitive grid tubes, an electrostatic field from grid to cathode. It doesn't matter what the polarity is. It doesn't matter whether the grid is grounded or the cathode is grounded. The drive is from grid to cathode and always is. Grounded grid and grounded cathode means something different. A problem here is that this B battery source, negative, is grounded. It also puts the plate to cathode current. See, no such thing as plate current. The current doesn't come out of the plate and go nowhere. It goes through the cathode. It goes through this transformer. If that transformer were to open, there could be high voltage across it. Possibly if there's a breakdown, high voltage to the exciter. There's a bit of a, a voltage hazard there. Modern power grid tube amplifiers generally drawn like that. Same difference. Simply look. Ground, ground. The exciter is from grid to cathode, whether the grid is grounded or not. It's just that, just that the connection of the exciter is now backwards. It's RF, it's AC. It just puts the opposite polarity voltage from grid to cathode. There are some implications of that with having an unbalanced input. That's a different story. What's really happening here with grounded grid, and this is also full of errors, the, the, grounded, myth, the grounded grid myth goes that the grid is grounded and the plate grid capacitance disappears, and that's false. It doesn't matter if the grid is grounded, there is still capacitance from plate to grid. What is ignored because people refuse to, do, to learn and do circuit analysis is that feedback and oscillation does not occur because of capacitance from plate to grid. It occurs because of a voltage division of capacitance plate to grid and then capacitance grid to cathode. In most tubes, this is something like five picofarad. In the small, small received tubes, this could be 0 0.0035 for one of the, uh, the uh, for the front end tube in the TR3. I forget the number, but extremely low capacitance. And what what allows a feedback mechanism is a voltage division of the current through these capacitances to ground. Grounding the grid with a low impedance input, roughly speaking shorts the grid to the cathode. Uh, a term is swapping. So this several picofarad here is swapped out by a low impedance. Therefore, the small current from this high voltage plate source swinging kind of sort of gets filtered out. That is what is going on. It's, this, it's nonsense that there's electrostatic shielding and that prevents oscillation. That's simple circuit analysis proves that's wrong. So there in a nutshell is what's wrong with, especially ham radio theory regarding grounded grid. It's almost entirely wrong. In modern times, we have power grid tubes, heavy, heavy wire in the grid so they can take real current. The input to the 8163 3-400 is something like, oh, 100 ohms-ish. The amp I'm designing with the Amprex 8163 actually has plate curves for both grounded grid and grounded cathode, and they're almost identical. 
there's a slight difference in idle current and there's a slight difference in grid to cathode voltage when the polarity is effectively reversed. But it's essentially the same difference. It doesn't care which way the input's connected because again, it is and only can be from grid to cathode. That's for that's for the cathode reference to ground. If it's if it's a cathode follower, that might be a different story. There are other configurations for tubes that don't have to rely on that. But I'm talking about the common plate plus cathode minus. The drive will be from grid to cathode. So that's basically it. KBYP did it.